Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, a listener begins to notice strange bugs around their house. Bugs that shouldn't be there. Bugs that could possibly be paranormal. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Support the show. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash realghoststories. When you sign up to do that, here's what you get. EPP bonus episodes. Bonus ones every single week with some of our best ghost stories on. You also get advanced episodes of our show months before the release to the public. No ads in them either. Commercial free ghost stories all of it our whole archive you get access to eight years of content all commercial free all there for you to binge away upon uh our ebook our audiobook those right there 15 dollars values a piece so 30 dollars uh, value if you're going to get it through audible or uh amazon or whatnot you get all that uh it's all there for you when you become a supporter of our program at only five dollars a month it's like the cost of a cup of coffee and you literally get the world's largest archive of ghost stories audio archive of ghost stories ever created uh for five bucks a month ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to get all of that and yes i'm officially calling it that now the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories because i've done a little research And I'm pretty confident in saying that. I don't know who else would have more. There's other ghost podcasts out there and and, and, and they're a lot of good people and I'm friends with many of them. But I think we actually we have the largest audible archive of it over the years, just in sheer volume. Most podcasts will do one episode a week. Yeah. And then the bonus episode. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so you have many shows that are that they've been around f- longer than us in terms of years, but we've made up for it in content over the last eight years doing at some points seven days a week, five days a week, four days a week, five days a week. We've kind of varied it over the years, but we now put out about five hours a week of content uh, over the last. So there's I don't. I don't think there's any other larger audio archive of ghost stories other than our program, which is kind of neat. Um, but I mean, it wouldn't be possible without you guys. So if you got a ghost story, add it to our archive, become part of this thing and uh, call in at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. I know you had something kind of weird going on with a murder shed in your cat. Yeah, well, my murder she shed. Um, murder she shed, yes. Because it's funny because like, so this episode will air sometime in the future. I never know exactly when. Yeah. But if you are, sometimes they are aired sooner. Then you get access to it sooner. Yeah. So it's funny. I never know quite when to say like this happened how many weeks ago. I don't well, know. But well, it, it, I, so, can, I can define it quickly. EPPs will get this this week uh, in January. Okay. Uh, but the regular airing of this is going to be February 23rd. Okay. So... If you're hearing this February 23rd, scroll back on my Instagram page, Carol Hughes at Carol Hughes. So the other day, my cat likes to go outside, but I am that kind of cat mom that I can't let her just go out on her own because I'm just afraid that something will happen to her and then I have to live with it. So her whole like knowledge of going outside is I follow her around the yard and I have a big backyard. So she loves it. I follow her around the yard. And yesterday she goes on her own into the murder she shed. So I'm like talking to my sister on the phone. I'm like, oh my God, my cat just walked into my murder shed. And so I'm like, excuse me, I'm going to put you on speakerphone so I can take a picture of this. So I take a picture of her and I come back in later and I go to post it on Instagram. And I did post it. And I'm like, hey, Rizzo is, that's my cat's name. Rizzo is uh, exploring the murder shed, whatever. And Mm -hmm. then I'm like, what's in front of her in that picture? 
it looks like there's something written in the cement. Mm -hmm. So I get up and I go outside and I take a picture of it. And it's like 1984, Curtis Kendra. And, okay, so, and you can even see in the picture, like it's by a stack of wood for my fire pit. Mm -hmm. Like I carried all that wood. There's a lot of it that you can't see in the picture, but because my neighbor chopped down two very large trees, I have all this wood that I put in the murder shed and I have walked on that and I never saw it until I go to post a picture of my cat. And I'm like, what does it say in my murder shed? And it's Curtis and Kendra, 1984. Isn't that weird? You know what it reminds me like, of? Like, I swear, every time I go in that shed, I see something. The crutches are still there. I looked. Jack and Diane. <laughs> Curtis. Kendra. <laughs> Kendra. <laughs> It, it, it's 1983, totally Jack and Diane, Curtis and Kendra, you know. I just thought that's so weird. Like, especially the day, if nothing else, the day that I hauled, probably from the front of my house to the back of my yard, it's a little, it's a ways. I have a, like, I live on a pretty big lot. Yeah. And I probably hauled eight to 10 armloads of wood and put it in there right there it's so funny you've never <laughs> noticed that do i yeah. just do i just not see shit like what's the matter like how did i have crutches in there and never see him and how did this happen and i never saw it it's just weird not that not i don't know that it made it feel creepy to me or anything but like how did i not know people's names were right there i'm just googling curtis kendra murder wichita and seeing if anything comes <laughs> 1984. up 1984 Dateline report to focus on up. No, I'm not. Oh, no. No, everything has like, no, nothing's matching up. Sorry. Okay. Thank God. But oh, wait, anyway, so you, you can go to my Instagram page and you can see my murder. Because I only took the picture because my cat was in the murder shed. And you can see. Oh, wait, here we go. Here we go. Curtis Lattimore Kendra Williams found beaten to death inside their shed in the backyard. <laughs> of Carol's. Future. With a oh. hook. <laughs> Man with hook and peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> he was being done by Captain Morgan. Uh, it and was interesting because his crutches were never found. Parrot peck marks in the eyeballs of the you know, deceased. <laughs> no, no, it's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> when you first started doing that, I'm like, holy shit, did he just find <laughs> I don't want to know. I got you for two seconds. That's good. About uh, that long, actually. Cause, but two seconds seems like forever when yeah. you think someone was murdered in your shed. <laughs> literally. Oh, that's good. Uh, 855-853-4802. Our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to our first story. Hey, uh, Tony, Carolyn Harper. My name is Abby, and I am from New Brunswick, Canada. And I've been listening to your podcast for about two months now. I'd like to thank you for making my night shifts a little bit easier. Almost all my life, I've been into ghosts since a young age, and I've been watching ghost shows with my grandparents. Watching shows like this is what brought me closer to my nan more than anyone else. We've always been believers. She also was the only one who believed all my own encounters growing up, and I pretty much have her to thank for allowing my sensitivity to the paranormal to grow. My nan calls it the family gift, since my cousin and aunt are also overly sensitive as well. My nan shared her Wiccan beliefs with me, and that is what sparked my interest in witchcraft. Now that you know this background history, I'm going to tell you about the time that I had a dark energy attached to me because I did not take enough caution in my practice of witchcraft. Always cast a circle. One night, I was in my bedroom just chilling like any usual 17-year-old, and I noticed a few small bugs flying around my light. I thought nothing of it really and went to bed. Around 2 a.m., I woke up to an even louder buzzing sound. I flipped my light on, and there was a huge swarm of little black bugs around my light and ceiling. Did I mention it was in the middle of December in Canada? My window in my room is also where it's sealed in plastic. And Tony, let me tell you, the energy in that room was draining and dreadful. I decided after standing there frozen to go sleep with my sister. The next morning, I went into my room ready to light my sage and do a cleansing and kill some bugs, but there was not a single bug in sight. No holes in the plastic ceilings, the windows either. I was honestly so shocked and scared, 
I stopped practicing witchcraft for a few months after this because I was so freaked out and scared. When summer came along, after a long winter, my cousin moved back in with my nan and we started to practice witchcraft together. But this did not stop whatever happened that night for a year. I felt as if my energy were being sucked from me. I also suffered from major mood swings and I'd always have random bruises and scratches on my legs as well. My health got so bad, I always felt sick. Finally, I had enough. I decided to tell my cousin, who was more experienced than me, when it came to witchcraft about the bugs and how my energy is at an all-time low. That night, as we sat at the table playing Yahtzee, a small black bug fell under the table. It was the same bug as before, not as much as last time, thankfully. For a week each night while we sat at the table, the bugs had always come back. One even flew into my cousin's ear. Around this time, I started noticing a black fog in the corner of my eye whenever I was alone. This continued for a month until one night on a full moon, a super moon actually, I did a cleansing bath on myself and my crystals. I also made moon water too. That night I had a dream that I was sitting on a bench with this goddess-like figure. She was very bright and blinding, but also beautiful. She told me that everything was okay now, and that it was finally gone. I woke up crying. It felt as if a huge weight was off my shoulders. This is not the end though. I checked on my moon water that was placed in my window. I had three jars in total. Two jars were full of crystal clean water except for one. The water was an apple juice color. The energy the jar gave off was the same as the energy I felt that night with the bugs. I took that jar. I did not take the lid off, but I did seal it with white and black wax with an extraordinarily strong sealing rune. To this day, I have not seen any blacker bugs or that black shadow figure who felt the negative energy. I have, however, had two more dreams with the bright goddess's figure in it. One was when I had a surgery done, the one before when I was in a very depressive state. I'm now 20, and this all is happening in the age of 17 to 19. I now work with the goddessness Athena, I believe, she was the one who helped me out when I was going through all of that. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what happened. I am still figuring it out and researching it for myself. I love your podcast. I also listen to Harper's new podcast as well. Keep up the good work. And thank you for everything you do for the paranormal community. Thoughts on all of that? Well, I don't have, I don't know what kind of input I can have because I don't really know about, I'm not really familiar with the practices. I'm not either. So that's a little like I have expertise in anything. <laughs> I'm nothing more than your co-host. But um, I learned in, uh, earlier on the, on the last episode that we did that you did tarot cards. I had no idea. I did. I did. I was into that forever. I was super good at it. So you have more knowledge on that than witch, I do. But that's not witchcraft. It's not. No, but it, it is It is more than I know about these sort of things. I wouldn't know how to do tarot cards. You would. There's books on it. Well, I could figure it out, sure, but you know I don't. Yeah. Well, that's so weird how you learn some new stuff about people all the time. I know. But um, you know. My niece wants my deck of tarot cards, and so I'm like, yeah, you can have it until I found it and I got it out. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I always, I kind of liked having them. So I haven't given them to her yet. But um, it's just kind of, it's so what they're, what she's talking about is very difficult for me to really comment on because I don't really know. Yeah. Like, because she was saying, now I work with a goddess, Athena or something like that. Yeah. So I don't understand all that. I don't either. I do know waking up with bugs flying around your light in the middle of winter, even where I live, and I'm not nowhere near Canada, would be very weird. Yeah. And then the fact that, you know, you're feeling drained and all of that, it's almost like you open yourself up to something. Sure. That's kind of what it sounds like. And then, I mean, good God, you're playing Yahtzee and bugs are dropping down, which is weird. Who doesn't have that happen? Right. Yahtzee. Yeah. Yahtzee. I, I oh, the only thing God. I can identify, and, and I, I don't, I'm not discounting anything they said. I just don't understand that world, and I'm not discounting that world. It's just not familiar to me, so it's hard to say, here's what you should or shouldn't be doing. Um, 
is and there uh, are people listening right now who are like, you guys do blah 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 blah. I, yeah, I just don't. I, I I'm not against it. I just don't know it. Um, but um, I, I did have a co-host once who was a witch. Uh, but that was twenty some years ago. Uh, in top forty radio, we we're playing like Fifty Cent. And then uh, she went into witchcraft talk. I'm like, oh, that's and interesting. I lost my virginity to a warlock. So there's there you that. go. There you go. I mean, I, all but these that weird was connections. Way, that was a while ago. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write a, I'm gonna write a book. Somebody's called my co-hosts. <laughs> uh, no, but, but uh but the, the only thing I could identify was what was with the water thing. And I know I'd have no idea what moon water is. Sounds interesting. Sounds refreshing. Sounds like I a marketable product. I thought the same thing when she yeah. mentioned moon water. I'm like, I love that idea. Yes. I don't know what it is, but purified by the energies of the moon. Yeah, like no. moon water. Because it's really cool in my backyard. There's some nights when the moon is really like right now you couldn't see to the my back fence because it's so dark back there. Yeah. But there are nights when the moon is so bright and you can see the entire yard. It's really cool. And I'm yeah. guessing that's when you could make the moon water. Yeah. And, and, I don't know what to do with it. And once it's kind of it. cool. It's like sun tea, but it's moon water. Um, and I, 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 kind of cool of an idea. I mean, I, there's something about it. There's something about being out there. I mean, we're out here in the country now and I don't have city lights around me because Fayetteville's eight miles that way. But so all I have is just starlight. And honestly, honest to God, not that long ago, a couple, uh, probably like a month ago, first time Harper, I think has been outside of a city um, and has just open sky, open pasture to see it. And she walked out with me one night and she was just like, it was a clear night. Oh my God, dad, I can see all the constellations. And it was, it was as clear as night, you know, and a perfect dark night, no city lights, just everything is clear. And she was just utterly amazed. And so what did we do? We brought technology into the, to the mix and we got an app and then we could hold up to the sky and it showed where all the constellations were. But it really helped her see the constellations and understand them. But she was more amazed by just the starlight and the moonlight and just the purity of it onto the ground and how much it lit up our yard. And it was a really neat thing. So I don't discount it. I don't understand what she's talking about yet with the moon water, but I don't discount it at all because I think there's there's something to that world. But it makes me think that, you know, we've talked about it with other people. There's obviously open your open, opening yourself up to something dark mm -hmm. is pretty universal, you know? So yeah. my guess is that happened yeah. with her and, now, you know, the, and somehow how the one it, jar of water was all tainted. That's kind of weird, but that was how yeah. all my water was growing up. We had a well, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would get, I always had like the glass of water at my bedside. I still do to this day. But when I was a kid, you get your water and it's clear when you pour it at night. And by the morning, it looks like rust. <laughs> the, the whole glass is like. You're drinking that shit. I know. That was how I grew up on. I grew up on rusty water. And uh yeah, I mean, but it was exactly what she described, where it's like, after Obviously, a little while... Obviously, whoever dug your well didn't do a good job. I'm still alive, so I guess that's um, something. But at some point, I'm sure I'll be filing a lawsuit against somebody that I see an 800 number four on it at 2 a.m. on TBS. <laughs> if you were the victim Talking of well powder, water... Yeah, yeah, that's me. Well water in Northeast Wisconsin <laughs> in 1984, <laughs> you may be qualified for this settlement. Yeah, like, Hey, that's me, finally, yes. Uh, uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to show your real ghost stories with us. Uh, let's go to a caller. Hi, you're on the air. Hello, um, my name's Dana, and um, I've been living in, a, it's like a seven-floor apartment monster building. But we, I, me and my fiance, we moved in two years ago, and uh, since the beginning, there's been some noticeable interactions with the paranormal. And I called in once before about this, um, where I had a Jesus statue thrown uh, and a viewfinder, but 
there's no way it could have happened, right? Um, so progressively getting worse have been my dreams. And within the last week, my dreams have become so active and a very uncomfortable, uh, whether it be like violence or something that just induces anger constantly. Uh, and so this has been happening, like I said, uh, over the last week. And nothing's changed. There hasn't been any extra stress or anything like that. And uh, last night, something ooky spooky happened. So that morning, I had a particularly rough dream. Um, it was a dream where people were harming pets and animals for joy, right? And uh, that really gets to me, as I assume it does a lot of other people. And so I woke up, I did my deal, went to work, came home, and I was talking to my mom, and I had the distinct sound of five taps on my window as if someone were trying to get my attention. And I looked around. I didn't see anybody. I was in the middle of an empty parking lot in my building. Um, it's a back parking lot that nobody uses. And I distinctly heard the knock, 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 but in like a quicker repetition. And it was very deliberate. And it gave me a case of the ooky spookies. And it's been pretty consistent like that recently. There have been more things moving, more things going bump in the night. Uh, but that one, that one kind of got me. Well, thanks for being amazing. And thank you for all that you do. Bye. Thanks for sharing your experiences with us. I like the ooky spooky. I haven't heard that. <laughs> right. uh, thoughts? Well, it's funny because when she's talking about that knock, 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 the other day I was sitting on my sofa having lunch and I heard knock, knock, knock on my front door. And the funny thing is that I defaulted to, is that a ghost or is it a person? <laughs> <laughs> Is my neighbor bringing over chicken soup. I don't know how to tell them yet that I'm vegetarian, but <laughs> I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. So what did they you do with the soup? Food. What? What did you do with the soup? It's in my refrigerator. <laughs> you, you, I don't know what to do with it. And then gotta, I also don't want them to see me throwing it out. Yeah. So it's like, I got to wait till I have full trash and I can put it in there. But Well, you have friends um, that aren't vegetarian, right? I mean, that are living there. I mean, I know I'm not, but. What? Is everybody a vegetarian that's your friend? Can you give the soup to a friend? No, it's my neighbor. And like, I don't want to go. So oh, I would normally give it to my mom. You don't want to see the, the soup. You don't want the soup leaving your house. You want to like be spotted sneaking exactly. the soup out. I see. Right? Okay. I don't yeah. want to like, like where he might just yeah. be walking out of his house. And I awkwardly, like, <laughs> I'm taking the soup to my mother. You don't want to be a soup sneaker. I understand. <laughs> I was going to yep. just put it in my trash first. <laughs> But anyway, that's funny because, you know, that's such a distinct sound mm -hmm. when someone knock, 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 and sure. it gets your attention. It's like, oh, and so that's a really spooky thing when it's not your neighbor at the door. There's nobody there. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid and we lived in that haunted house and, um, and, and the neighbors, my best friend, they would jump up on one side of the porch and run across the porch and knock on the front door. And that's what happened. But it was dark. It was really weird because we were kids and they didn't come over after dark. Mm -hmm. And so I went over to the door thinking it was her and there was nobody there. And it was like, okay, somebody just ran across the porch and knocked on the door and mm -hmm. now they're not there. So I know. And sometimes those ooky spooky dreams... Did I say it right? Yeah, spooky, ooky spooky. Ooky. Yes, I like that. That was cute. Um, not knowing if she takes melatonin or something like that at night, but I um, thought I would try melatonin once to help me sleep. Yeah. And it gave me really vivid, horrible dreams. Really? So I don't do melatonin anymore. I do. For that reason. And it might have just been I was having vivid, horrible dreams anyway. 
But I was like, I, I will just not sleep at night before I go through that shit. Because they're really bad dreams. So sometimes it can be something that you've ate, you know, so look at that first. Sure. But those vivid dreams, I think can, there can be something to them. No, I, I, I completely agree. I love the melatonin, uh, but it honestly doesn't do a whole hell of a lot for me anymore. Uh, I, I take melatonin and what, what's the other one I take? I'm actually, I'm, I literally pulled up the Walmart app so I can look at my prescriptions <laughs> to tell you what the hell it is I take. Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Trazodone is the one I do at night for uh, uh, sleep. And that, I don't know, I, don't know. I, I still wake up. I, there's, I've yet to find a sleep medicine that I really like. Um, and I don't want anything addictive or anything like that. So I'm always really picky on those sort of things. Uh, Benadryl. But, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know. Like, it, Gives you that weird Benadryl hangover, though. Anyway. I, I, I go from uh, I can fall asleep easily and then sleep soundly. Or it's uh, I can't fall asleep easily. But then when I finally do, I sleep soundly. It's like it's never just the balance of the two unless I'm in a haunted hotel. And I'm honest to God, I'm not just saying that because it's our this is the show. But that's the only time I'm like, I'm good is the haunted hotel thing. That's the best sleep of my life is the haunted hotels. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of I, I, I go back and forth with that. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go another caller. Hi. I am from Pittsburgh, PA, and this is my ghost story. Well, when my husband and I first met, we lived in a haunted Civil War house. How do I know this? Um, because, literally, the house was split into two apartments. One couple had the front section and my husband and I had the back section. We had just adopted our boxer, Bree, and she would randomly bark at things. And one day, I think they had to check um, something down in the basement. Well, underneath where our bed was, was the basement. And it was basically, you lifted up a section of wood and there were stairs down there. Well, the landlord decided to tell me then that there were actually chains still in the wall from where they kept runaway slaves. And I was like, yeah, you know, um, what else am I supposed to say except, hey, this is the Civil War house. So one night, my husband and I, we were home alone doing our thing or what have you and the couple in the front of the house weren't home at all and it was pretty quiet you know we're back in the back back in the back and nothing really going on or whatever we hear the chains rattle we were like i looked at my husband i looked at brie and i'm like she moved he's like no well, we were in the living room, and I said, why don't you go into the bedroom and check it out? And of course, like most wives, you're like, you go first. And he's like, no, you go first. So I went in with him pushing me, and our bed, which was laying on top of the, um, he just wanted to go down into the basement, was actually moved so none of us were in there our dog was with us in the living room and that's pretty much it i know that sounds silly but that is one of the many ghost stories that i have because i grew up near gettysburg pa thanks guys for all you do in your wonderful show all right bye. thanks for sharing your experiences with us lots of stuff out there obviously so i'm I'm not clear on how that all went down. Mm -hmm. So the you lift up the flooring and there's stairs and that was underneath their bed area. From what I and, understand. And then when she went into the bedroom that the bed was moved. I, I, I'm not completely clear on it either. Something 
was revealed but that seven they didn't was otherwise different know. when yeah. they walked in the room. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? Like, I would have, like, I wouldn't, I don't even have words. I wouldn't even be comfortable once I found out that the floor lifts up to basically a cellar and there are chains on the wall and they had people chained up up to those chains. It's not exactly like, the type of... How could you uh, ever sleep at night you know, when somebody tells you that? Like, oh, let's uh, cuddle up and uh, listen to some light rock and fall asleep. As uh, we know right, right below us, there was uh, people that were once chained up, probably. Yeah, like, you can't just yeah. Netflix and chill ever <laughs> in your house. Like, <laughs> Okay, Netflix and chill. Are, are you using the term correctly? Because I am like, I still have to like learn what this term even means. Netflix. It means that you're just watching Netflix and you're just not it doing anything. It is not anything. what that means. What? You think it's like code for having sex? It or is. Netflix and chill. Wikipedia is an internet slang term, a euthanism for sexual activity, either as part of a romantic oh, relationship or man. as casual sex or as a groupie invitation. Shit. Since so it's what? first recorded non uh, sexual use of the tweet post in 2009. The phrase has gained popularity within Twitter community and other social media sites like Facebook and Vine. By 2015, Netflix and chill has become an internet meme and used on the teenage social media was commonly described as sexual by Fusion. So there you go. Oh my God. So it's not like something I say very often. No, and you just use it incorrectly. there are people who are like, Carol is getting it on. <laughs> Like, there she goes again. And then all that I really meant was I just had no life. You meant you were binging on making a murderer. <laughs> and people thought you were, like, whoring it out. Okay, so in their case, same thing. Like, so they're having sex on their bed. And they're, like, they're having sex. And there's this staircase to, like, that <laughs> underneath them. Yeah. That's creepy. Little odd, little weird when you find the uh, the remnants of people that had once been restrained to the walls. Uh, it, it's hard to be comfortable in those situations. I actually have a story uh, relating to that, believe it or not. Uh, it was in uh, Traverse City, Michigan. There's uh, a restaurant that is in an old asylum. Uh, it's now called Traverse City Commons. It used to be the... I think Traverse City State Hospital or something of that nature, it was called. Um, but it's a huge complex of these Gothic style buildings that was once the northern Michigan area kind of central insane asylum, uh, as it would have been called in its day. And these buildings are massive. And there's still several of them. Almost all of them are still standing, quite honestly. Uh, a couple of them have now been converted into artisan shops and bakeries and restaurants and uh and there's also like assisted living facilities there as well i believe and uh retirement facilities and all that uh, so bravo to them for keeping the buildings alive and doing something with them but the first time i went there was 2005 6 it was right before i went to wichita right before i met you like like two weeks i think before i got to the station and i had uh, dinner with my sales manager there and it had not yet been turned into any of these things other than a restaurant in the basement of one of these buildings. So he's like, it's really cool. It's creepy. You'll love it. Here's the address. So I garment it because that's what you did back then. And I found the place and all the windows are broken out of this giant facility. The only lights are coming from the basement. And I'm on this campus of abandoned asylums. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Giant trees everywhere. It was out of a horror movie. Park my car, get in to the, uh, the building downstairs where the lights are coming from. And it's like this five-star restaurant. And it's beautiful. And the food is amazing. But on the wall where the table is, we're sitting against the window that's barred. And on the wall is a metal plate with two chain circles, like the hooks that a chain would attach to. And you're literally sitting in what was a remnants of someone's room or in reality, cell. And the uncomfortable feeling in that restaurant was just impalpable. It was insane. It was so dark and weird. It just the weirdest sensation I ever had. Went back there two, three years ago, 
they've removed the hooks from the wall. The buildings are much more upkept now. The broken windows are gone. There's shops and things and everything. It's not as dark as it did once feel, but oh my goodness, that was a bizarre experience. I'm looking at pictures of that place. It looks amazing. It is amazing. It is totally amazing. And the couple of those places you can go into and, and walk around, but then there's like 20 so buildings just like that all around. You can walk it's to massive. Yeah. Look on my, on my Facebook page from about one or two years ago when I went up to uh, Mackinac Island, and everything, I have a ton of pictures I took of some of the abandoned buildings. I just walked around after dinner and just took pictures of these abandoned asylums all around this place I had dinner at. And it was just so neat. But they're slowly trying to re, you know, refurbish the buildings or recoup, whatever you want to call it. But there's a lot of, I'm not a big, big sensitive person, but there's a lot of energy there that's just weird. And I don't know what, what is the answer to that when you have buildings like that, where clearly inhumane behavior took place, but there's these giant buildings that are statues to history. Do you, do you tear them down because of what happened in them? Or do you let them remain standing and try and refurbish them and repurpose them in a positive way to, I don't know, somehow make, you know, somehow make good or, or, or add positivity to a very negative environment? Like, personally, I think they should keep the buildings. And then, you know, it, if something really horrible happened there, you could use it as a tool yeah, to kind of teach about it. To educate. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, this is totally different but in chicago i wanted to do like a gangster kind of weekend and because yeah. i go to chicago quite a bit and so we did the the bus tour the gangster whatever it was yeah tour but all of those things are gone all the places that, like the valentine's day massacre it's not there yeah like they can take you where it happened but Chicago just wanted to not have anything to do with that gangster history. And so they just eliminated it all. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, on this site, this is where this happened. But a lot of that historical stuff that you heard about, it's not there. Yeah. The evidence is gone. Yeah. And so it was kind of disappointing because it's not like I really wanted to see where the Valentine's Day massacre, like the wall or anything, yeah. but in a way, I don't know, just for his history. One of my favorite spots to visit in Chicago, and have you been there? The Eastland site? You know what I'm talking about? No. You don't know about the Eastland? No. Oh, Carol. The Eastland disaster. This is, it was one That's of it, the... The boat? Yeah. I went to where it's, where they took off from. Well, that's where it sank. Yeah. Okay. Cause, cause it sank it, right it, there. And people, that's right. People could see on either side. Yeah. Cause it started on fire and everybody was, everybody was ready to board the thing. And they, they did board the thing and the thing caught on fire and nobody knew what was going on. Nobody got off. The thing tips over into the river right there. And 844 people died right there in the middle of Chicago. Um, and it was just this hor it was it was like the worst shipwreck at the time uh, uh, then titanic happened um and so that beat that but up until that it was one of the worst uh or no i'm sorry titanic was, titanic was before it this was the worst one inland on in uh yeah. in the us at that time and i i went to that site on a haunted tour okay which is kind of cool i but... went there by accident <laughs> We were, I was just down there one night and we were drinking and going from place to place and we were reading, oh shit, this is where the Eastland collapsed. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's neat. When something had happened and everyone went from one side of the, they, there's too many people anyway, and they went from one side of the boat to the other, yeah. like a wreck of some kind or a fire or something. And so everybody went to go see what it was. Yeah. And, but I don't, I mean, like, wouldn't that be weird, though, if your house had, a, like, you just lift the floor up and you go down to something like that? Yeah. I don't think I'd ever sleep at night. I'd be out. I would just think there would be all kinds of weird shit. Like, I think you'd be hearing those chains rattle all the time. And even if you weren't, just knowing that that's there. Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, there, there's no, there's no many coats of paint. There's no redesigning. There's no nothing. I mean, unless you. Because that's the kind of thing that, like, 
I get like that place in Traverse City, which is super cool and it's yeah. massive. And I get why that's massive. But like, I just think it would be weird. Let's renovate this and make a duplex and we'll yeah. rent it out. Yeah. Despite the fact that people were chained in the basement there. <laughs> because now, like, when you hear of people being chained up in houses, it's usually some sexual pervert person, and they do destroy the house. Yeah. That, I think, is different than destroying a landmark. Like, the BTK house mm-hmm. here, they destroyed that. Sure. And or, I'm glad they did. Because then it just the turns point. into a gawker point where people yeah. just go by and... So I understand taking certain things down. And I kind of think that house might be better off not being there. I mean, if you you subscribe to the idea that there is the energy makes an imprint on things. Yeah, it's going to be there, whether it's your superstitions or not. I, I don't think it is a superstition thing. I mean, I think that stuff makes an imprint. And whether it manifests itself in the way of like something really malevolent or just an energy that is just negative and then kind of, you know, you you feed off of it and it hurts you mentally and all that. It doesn't have to be that you're seeing shadow people or this or that. You're just weighing you down and you don't know why. And you leave the environment and suddenly gone. That's something. There's something there that's doing that. And I think someone with such negativity that would have done those things, you know, that, that can stay. And I don't think there's a lot of, you know, necessarily, you know, rejuvenating the place or, or, or changing it up. It's a matter of, it's got like a half wipe. It's like nuclear waste. It's like, look, you can't get rid of it. It's just got to kind of take its time to dissipate. I just, I think I'd have to start looking for a place right away. Yeah. As difficult as it could be. I, I don't think I could uh, could stay in a place like that. Anyway, thanks for that story. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, become an extra podcast person. EPP, sign up at ghostpodcast.com. Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories, the other spot to sign up. And we greatly thank you for your support of the program and keeping us on the air. We could not do it without you. Until next time, for Carol and Harper, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thank you for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. Online.